in memory of john p altgeld address of clarence s darrow at the funeral this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Veronica Jenkins In memory of John P. Altgeld, address of Clarence S. Darrow at the funeral, by Clarence Darrow. In the great flood of human life that is spawned upon the earth, it is not often that a man is born. The friend and comrade that we mourn today was formed of that infinitely rare mixture that now and then at long long intervals combines to make a man john p altgeld was one of the rarest souls who ever lived and died he was a humble birth a fearless life and a dramatic fitting death we who knew him we who loved him we who rallied to his many hopeless calls we who dared to praise him while his heart still beat cannot yet feel that we shall ever hear his voice again. John P. Altgeld was a soldier tried and true, not a soldier clad in uniform, decked with spangles and led by fife and drum in the mad intoxication of the battlefield. Such soldiers have not been rare upon the earth in any land or age. John P. Altgeld was a soldier in the everlasting struggle of the human race for liberty and justice on the earth. From the first awakening of his young mind until the last relentless summons came, he was a soldier who had no rest or furlough, who was ever on the field in the forefront of the deadliest and most hopeless spot, whom none but death could muster out. Liberty, the relentless goddess, had turned her fateful smile on John P. Altgeld's face when he was but a child, and to this first fond love he was faithful unto death. Liberty is the most jealous and exacting mistress that can beguile the brain and soul of man. She will have nothing from him who will not give her all. She knows that his pretend love serves but to betray. But when once the fierce heat of her quenchless lustrous eyes have burned into the victim's heart, he will know no other smile but hers. Liberty will have none but the great devoted souls, and by her glorious visions, her lavish promises, her boundless hopes, her infinitely witching charms, she lures these victims over hard and stony ways, by desolate and dangerous paths, through misery, obloquy, and want, to a martyr's cruel death. Today we pay our last sad homage to the most devoted lover, the most abject slave, the fondest, wildest, dreamiest victim, that ever gave his life to liberty's immortal cause. In the history of the country where he lived and died, the life and works of our devoted dead will one day shine in words of everlasting light. When the bitter feelings of the hour have passed away, when the mad and poisonous fever of commercialism shall have run its course, when conscience and honor and justice and liberty shall once more ascend the throne from which the shameless, brazen goddess of power and wealth have driven her away, then this man we knew and loved will find his rightful place in the minds and hearts of the cruel, unwilling world he served. No purer patriot ever lived than the friend we lay at rest today. His patriotism was not paraded in the public marts, or bartered in the stalls for gold, his patriotism was of that pure ideal mold that placed the love of man above the love of self. John P. Altgeld was always and at all times a lover of his fellow man. Those who reviled him have tried to teach the world that he was bitter and relentless, that he hated more than loved. We who knew the man, we who had clasped his hand and heard his voice and looked into his smiling face, we who knew his life of kindness, of charity, of infinite pity to the outcast and the weak, we who knew his human heart could never be deceived, a truer, greater, gentler, kindlier soul has never lived and died. And the fierce bitterness and hatred that sought to destroy this great grand soul had but one cause, the fact that he really loved his fellow man. As a youth, 
our dead chieftain, risked his life for the cause of the black man, whom he always loved. As a lawyer, he was wise and learned, impatient with the forms and machinery which courts and legislatures and lawyers have woven to strangle justice through expense and ceremony and delay. As a judge, he found a legal way to do what seemed right to him, and if he could not find a legal way, he found a way. As a governor of a great state, he ruled wisely and well, a governor elected by the greatest personal triumph of any governor ever chosen by the state. He fearlessly and knowingly bared his devoted head to the fiercest, most vindictive criticism ever heaped upon a public man, because he loved justice and dared to do the right. In the days now past, John P. Altgeld, our loving, peerless chief, in scorn and derision, was called John Pardon Altgeld by those who would destroy his power. We who stand today around his bier and mourn the brave and loving friend are glad to adopt this name. If in the infinite economy of nature there shall be another land where crooked paths shall be made straight, where heaven's justice shall review the judgments of the earth, if there shall be a great wise humane judge before whom the sons of men shall come, we can hope for nothing better for ourselves than to pass into that infinite presence as the comrades and friends of John Pardon Altgeld, who opened the prison doors and set the captive free. Even admirers have seldom understood the real character of this great human man. These were sometimes wont to feel that the fierce bitterness of the world that assailed him fell on deaf ears and an unresponsive soul. They did not know the man, and they do not feel the subtleties of human life. It was not a callous heart that so often led him to brave the most violent and malicious hate. It was not a callous heart, it was a devoted soul. He so loved justice and truth and liberty and righteousness that all the terrors that the earth could hold were less than the condemnation of his own conscience for an act that was cowardly or mean. John P. Altgeld, like many of the earth's great souls, was a solitary man. Life to him was serious and earnest, an endless tragedy. The earth was a great hospital of sick, wounded, and suffering, and he, a devoted surgeon, who had no right to waste one moment's time, and whose duty was to cure them all. While he loved his friends, he yet could work without them, he could live without them, he could bid them one by one good-bye when their courage failed to follow where he led, and he could go alone out into the silent night, and looking upward at the changeless stars, could find communion there. My dear dead friend, long and well have we known you, devotedly have followed you, implicitly have trusted you, fondly have loved you. Beside your bier we now must say farewell. The heartless call has come, and we must stagger on the best we can alone. In the darkest hours we will look in vain for your loved form. We will listen hopelessly for your devoted, fearless voice. But though we lay you in the grave and hide you from the sight of man, your brave words still will speak for the poor, the oppressed, the captive, and the weak and your devoted life inspire countless souls to do and dare in the holy cause for which you lived and died. End of In Memory of John P. Altgeld Address of Clarence S. Darrow at the Funeral by Clarence Darrow Recording by Veronica Jenkins in Ottawa, Illinois